all right then now let's proceed to section 2 and let me just briefly explain what is section 2 all about in this particular section you may have one or more than one options correct so generally we call multiple options and the marking scheme is quite interesting if all correct options are bubbled you would be awarded plus four marks for instance if a, C, D are the correct options of this particular question and if someone bubbles all three options in this format A, C, D then four marks would be awarded. There is also a partial marking scheme. In that situation suppose A, C, D are the correct option and someone bubbles only A and C then for each correct option one mark would be awarded. So in this case two marks would be scored by the candidate but care has to be taken this scheme would not be valid if someone ticks one incorrect option so even if someone ticks only one incorrect option the partial marking scheme would be disvalid and for that negative marking minus two would be penalized and for no options attempted or no options bubble in that case the marks given would be zero so this is the case where there is four marks, the partial marking scheme and the negative marking. Question number six, the first question of this section is brought from Ray Optics where this medium has refractive index constant as N1, this has N2 and the medium has a depth of D and the refractive index is varying. Z increases with depth and N is a function of Z in this way and Z increases with depth together this index is greater than this n2 greater than n1 light enters at angle of incidence theta i and finally emerges at angle of emergence theta f and there is a lateral displacement of l based on this we need to choose the correct options which are very clear in front of you now the first thing is the refractive index is varying gradually it's a continuous variation and the variation is with z so therefore, we can always make tiny slabs of infinitesimal thickness in this way so that at least for one infinitesimal thickness, the refractive index can be assumed to be constant. That's a very general idea of integration that we follow. So I have made these slabs just for the sake of simplicity. Now you could see all the slabs are parallel and when you have parallel slabs, you can always use Snell's law between any two points. So n1 sin theta i would be n2 sin theta f. Based on that, option number b would be correct. So a would be false. L is dependent on nz. That's true because the angle at each and every interface would be depending on how does n varies with z, eventually resulting the lateral displacement to the refractive index with z. So L would certainly depend on this and that's very clear that wherever it strikes that would determine L. So L is independent of the refractive index of this medium. It only depends up to here. So for that case option number D would also be correct. So question number six has correct options as B, C and D. Now let's move to question number seven. All right, now let's proceed to question number seven. And question number seven has been derived from the topic units and dimension. Here are the variables, length, permittivity, Boltzmann's constant, absolute temperature, this is number per unit volume, and Q is the charge. Based on this, which of the following is are dimensionally correct? We need to see the dimension of length. Now, at this particular level, it is not advised that you start calculating the dimension of each and every variables and you start putting on that. You got to go a bit trickily. If you see in this way, we need to verify the dimension of length and n has the dimension L minus 3 because that's number per unit volume. And there's a very nice way how you are going to tackle with this thing. You see, Q square by epsilon naught R would be the dimension of energy q square by 4 pi epsilon naught r 3 by 2 kt that's the average kinetic energy 
So this is energy and even this is energy. So this is going to be dimensionless. So you'll get Q square by epsilon naught KBT because you see this is the factor that you get everywhere and that will be having the dimension of length because this is dimensionless. So you take R here, that would give the dimension of length. So now the question reduces to a very simple format and on the basis of this, option number B and D will give you the correct answer. So that was with question number seven. Now we'll proceed to question number eight. Question number eight is very beautifully framed and it's something like this say. An incandescent bulb has a thin filament of tungsten heated to a high temperature. It emits black body radiation and the filament is observed to break up at random location after long time due to non-uniform evaporation. If it is powered at constant voltage, in other words, the supply is constant. We need to choose these options. Now the first thing is say temperature distribution over filament is uniform. This is incorrect because if evaporation rate is non-uniform, it's a clear indication that the temperature distribution would also be non-uniform. Resistance over small section decreases with time. Let's see. Now you see if the radius decreases, the cross-sectional area would decrease. So it implies the resistance has to increase. But here it says the resistance decreases, so this would be incorrect. Filament emits more light at higher band of frequency before it breaks. Now, frequency, that means something related to wavelength. In other words, we need to go with the displacement law. But for that, we need to verify how is the temperature varying, whether it increases or decreases with time. Let's try to see. Now, the first thing is see, at any given instant, if you use the equilibrium condition, V square by R would be if I take the emissivity to be 1, sigma A T4 minus surrounding 4. Now this is the curved surface area. So that directly depends on first power of radius. And this has rho L by A. A comes upstairs, the cross sectional area. So R square and here is R. So you could see eventually this all thing would give you a constant multiplied by R, which is the radius. Now with increase in time, you see the radius is decreasing, that's very evidently given. So that means the temperature decreases at the later stage. And if temperature decreases, the wavelength has to increase, the displacement law. And if wavelength increases, the frequency has to decrease. But the question says filament emits more light at higher band of frequency, but the calculation says that the frequency would be at a lower band, so this option would be incorrect. Filament consumes less power towards the end of the life of the bulb. This seems to be correct because the power is V square by R. Now you could see that the value of resistance is increasing because the cross-sectional area has decreased. So overall the power would decrease because the supply voltage is constant. So here you could say filament consumes less power. This would be the correct option. So here the correct option is D. Now we'll proceed to the next question. 